Hello and good evening friends. Welcome back to my channel. So I have uh, come back uh, after a few days and uh, today also I have got some nice uh, chess to show you. So today's uh, topic is uh, again uh, the short games but there is a little change. So today I have got games from you from the year 1600 onwards and some very classical short games. In my previous uh, videos I have shown you my own games and, ho and I hope you learn something from them. But today's lecture is a bit different but uh, uh, definitely it will be very entertaining and uh, you will learn a lot if you go through the entire uh, lecture and this stream. So let us start. Basically our main idea in, in this lecture, in this uh, stream will be to show some classical wins like for example I have started uh, uh, my games from 1600 onwards you know when the first annotated games appeared in the chess databases and uh, surely there will be many many interesting games so obviously when we talk about short games uh, we have to start with yes so we'll just start I'll just check yes so here I think the the quickest chess win ever is known to everybody I think yes I will just uh, show you the move so the the quickest a chess game can finish is in two moves so we'll go step by step so for that to happen white has to start with f3 and then uh, black goes e5 and then to lose you have to play only one move otherwise you cannot lose in two moves so white goes g4 and black mates with queen h4 check so i'm sure everybody had seen this this is known as a fool's mate and uh, i'm not sure if there are any practical games on this but this is obviously so much fun to you know go through these moves so practically it is the quickest you can win or a side can lose a game okay but I don't think uh, this has ever happened in a tournament game because who plays uh, f3 g4 in first two moves. Okay. So let's uh, go to the next one. Yes. And here, yeah, this is uh, the... And let's go to the next one. Okay. shows me only the fool's mate so let me just check okay there is some issue here just a moment okay I hope it will be fine now just a moment yes and now after the fool's mate what is the next mate which was uh, discovered initially yes so the next game we'll just see e4 e5 this is elementary guys but uh, we will uh, soon slowly move, move on to the more uh, you know tougher ones but uh, this is just for the education I'm showing you so white goes for bishop c4, knight c6, and white goes for queen h5. And I've seen uh, Nakamura playing this way even in recent games. So this is not uh, very rare. And now we know this as a scholar's mate. And how the scholar's mate happens? Black plays knight f6, and after queen f7, black is mated in fourth move. And this mate is known as the scholar's mate. Yes, guys, this is the scholar's mate. Hi, Nitul. Good to see you. And uh, yes. So let's move on to the next one. So I have shown you the fool's mate and the scholar's mate. And let's go to the 
smothered mate which is the third one so remember guys i am showing you these games from 1600 onwards so they seem they they would seem to be a bit elementary but they are very interesting so why it starts with the uh, okay and but this this one is 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 the one for black the previous two ones okay the first one was black and again in this one black plays knight d4 and uh, this uh, this one is uh, i was even i i remember i was teaching this to my students uh, very recently this move so knight d4 is actually a very interesting move here at the you know beginner and slightly advanced beginner level and here white should never take knight into e5 so knight into e5 is a big mistake because black gets queen g5 here and after queen g5 white goes for knight f7 and queen g2 so the rook on h1 is attacked rook f1 queen e4 check bishop e2 and now black goes on to give smothered mate with knight f3 so this is a very elementary trap but uh, all of you should know this and this is very interesting to to play on the board so the the trap starts with knight into d4 and then now if white knows the trap so white should just just take this and just castle and white is slightly better already but if white gets greedy after nd4 and plays knight e5 then I, as i showed you after queen g5 knight f7 if bishop f7 here then uh, black has king e7 and then white is uh, black is attacked on three fronts here So, and if you go bishop g8 now, <clears throat> then I have queen g2, rook f1, and then again I have queen e4. So, yes, guys. So, this is the third one. And now, let's move on to the next one, which is, uh, which is the Karokan smothered mate. And it's it is a mate for black, like white mates black. So I think this is also known. C3 D4 Knight E4, and now black plays Knight D7. White goes for Queen E2, and black must play E6. But uh, I think in some very old classical game, black went on to play Knight G F6. I think Paul Keres won a game like this once, and after Knight D6, black gets mated, and this is known as the Karokan smothered mate. Okay, so this is our fourth mate, fourth short game, and then we move on to the England Gambit mate. So in this, uh, this one is for black. So let's put black on our side, and here white starts with d4, and black plays e5. This is known as the England Gambit, guys. So. I'm not sure how many of you have seen this, but this is uh, many times played at uh, you know club level and uh, in blitz games. So white goes for d into e5, and black plays this interesting move queen e7. And white defends it, and black plays knight c6. And now the pawn on e5 is going, so white defends it with bishop f4, but that is a bad move because black gets queen b4 check and a double attack on. Uh, f4 bishop and b2 pawn so bishop d2 queen b2 bishop c3 and uh, now black has only one good move which is bishop b4 so white goes queen d2 here black takes bishop c3 now queen c3 is forced because knight c3 queen c1 queen a1 will come but if you go queen c3 which looks like force queen c1 is a mate and this is known as the england gambit mate so again this was uh, played uh, in classical era but still it's a lot of fun to you know go go over these games again and now we move on to the next one yes guys so okay just a moment i don't want to show 
very recent games so so when we talk about uh, 1600s so we have to see the games of an italian player called grecochino greco right so there was this italian player and he lived uh, 400 years ago so he was born in 1600 and uh, he he passed away very quickly he passed away in 1634 i believe so he lived only for 34 years but he is the first ever known strong player in the world like he was known as one of the strongest players in the world most the earliest strongest players in the world so he analyzed many positions and he had many short games and he gave this position way back in 1623 guys so in this position it is black to play and uh, as you can see black is two pawns down here and uh, if given a chance white will easily win this game because uh, the bishops are of the same color and it should not be a problem but can you draw here guys the question is can you draw here with black and remember this position was given almost 400 years ago in 1623 by Greco the first strongest strong player in the world so what would you play here yes Yes, so if you want to think here, you can just pause the video. I will just tell you the solution and we'll move forward. So here black obviously goes for rook a1 check. Rook f1 is forced. And now rook into f1, king into f1. And now comes a brilliant move. So you can pause the video again here and think about this. In the meantime, I'll tell you the solution. And the move is bishop h3, guys. It's a brilliant move. And now when white takes this, this is just a draw because black will come king f6 king g2 king g7 king g3 king h8 and uh, all of us should know that this is a theoretical draw i mean you can keep as many pawns on the h file this will never be uh, winning for white because white can have a pawn on h4 also h5 h6 but it won't change the assessment of the position and it will be a draw because white cannot drive the black king out of the h8 square so yes so this is a very interesting uh, position and I, I i found this actually today only and i was really impressed that 400 years ago also there were composers who could uh, compose such a position you know it's not so easy so it shows the greatness of greco and uh, the next one is uh, again a game by no not this one yes okay so greco as i mentioned he showed many short games in uh, 1600 so we will see some of his short games which are you know the earliest games we can find in the chess based database so it starts with e4 greco is black in this game e5 i hope you can uh, watch the games correctly f4 and white you know goes for king's gambit which was the most popular opening in those days so black goes for ef4 knight f3 g5 which is the main line still uh, today for black bishop c4 attacking the weak f7 square black goes g4 which is a wrong move you know you should not go g4 here but uh, that was long time ago uh, nowadays i think h6 is more popular but g4 was played knight e5 and now white is attacking both the f7 and the g4 square but black pieces are handled by greco so black would be winning this game so knight h6 and here White played knight g4, which is a wrong move, I think. Knight g4 is, is a blunder here. White should just uh, just castle here. And uh, white would be better in my opinion. But uh, after knight g4, which was a blunder uh, by 
by a team of you know nn nn is a nomenclature basically when you don't know the opponent's name so it this game is played between nn and greco and nn here means um amateur players basically so ng4 guys and how do you punish white for this so here greco went queen h4 check knight f2 and here black played d5 and after d5 white had only one move here white should have gone back to bishop e2 and after d4 black is better but white will be in the game but here what did what happened was white played bishop d5 and now can you tell the move guys what did black play after black's next move white resigned what was black's next move yes black played bishop g4 here i've never seen a more uh, nicer queen trap you know white's queen is trapped here it's over white resigned here because uh, you cannot do anything here if you go g3 then i'll go edge fg3 and if you take uh, edge g3 i'll go queen g3 and if you go knight g4 here then i have g2 check so it is all over so what an interesting game played 400 years ago so after bishop g4 white resigned so going on to the next one okay let's see okay and in this game greco is white so let's again shift the board yes and here white played e4 e5 knight f3 queen f6 now this is basically known in theory as greco defense so how did greco play against his own defense uh, long back in 1622 so this game was played in 1622 uh if i if i want to show you the just a moment yes i can show you the notation also so you will understand more but we can keep it as a uh, replay training that will be better okay so here as you can see the game was played in 1620 and here black played queen g6 you know in in chess uh, it is always advisable it is always suggested that you should not bring your queen out early but black is breaking all the all the rules of chess you know black wants to win a pawn so badly that black has played his queen to f6 and then queen g6 which is not at all advisable but you know this was played in 1620 so we can't be overly critical also so of the queen g6 castle black did manage to win a pawn queen e4 and black's idea was that okay now if you go rook e1 i can go queen c4 and i'll be fine but bishop f7 came on the board king f7 knight g5 and greco won in eight moves so okay many many analysts uh, have uh, mentioned that Greco could not have won all these games because in in the databases Greco has something like 70 games and all games he has won in miniatures. So what chess historians have claimed that uh, Greco could not have uh, won so many games uh, against all kinds of opposition. So probably all these games were constructed games. So this is one criticism which Greco gets, but I mean this is classical chess we are talking about this is 1620 and there was no record of all the games at that time. so we can never be sure whether these were played games or these were constructed ones but these are the real uh, classic history of chess so we should just enjoy them okay so this was how greco won this game and now yes so we'll move on to the next one yeah these are ultra short games and now soon we will be moving to the modern games uh, friends where you will see modern grandmaster losing quick games and uh, that will be exciting too so i just wanted to go step by step so now let me go to the next one 
Okay, this we saw earlier. Okay, so let's see this one. So is it the same one or different? Yeah, okay. Here uh, Greco is white and he plays the King's Gambit. So let's see how he handled King's Gambit because one game earlier we saw just now, two games uh, before he had black pieces. Now he has white pieces. So bishop c4, this is another method of handling king's, in, king's gambit. So queen h4 check, king f1. And this is still the main line. So 400 years back, he was so ahead of his time, Greco, that he, he constructed the main line of king's gambit. Bishop c5, d4, bishop b6, knight f3. And now white plays this king's gambit line to get an excellent pawn center. And that is the idea of, yes, and now, yes, in this position, black played queen g4 and again bishop f7 check. So in most of the games played by Greco, we saw this, we see this theme of bishop into f7 and either knight going to e5 or g5. So here knight e5 check, king f8, knight into g4 and white one. It's hard to believe that, uh, you know, Greco gets all these kind of opponents. But okay, who is complaining? You know, we are just enjoying the chess classics here. So, okay, so we are studying chess history here. And we saw a very quick win by Greco. And let's move forward. So, yes, so another game. And this time, Greco's opponent plays the Philidor defense and uh, Greco plays h3 which is like totally nowadays people will never play h3 you know d4 is the most natural move here but uh, this is already a very old game so white played h3 and black went for knight f6 white played c3 white's idea is to play d4 setting a trap in the process and obviously Greco's opponent fell into it and played knight into e4 and uh, now, what should white play? Just pause the video and think. What should white play? Yes, white obviously played queen a4 check and white gets the e4 knight. Very elementary but very beautiful. Okay, so Greco wins one more game in a very short style. And let's go to the next one. And another of Greco's games. No, this is the same one. We need for check. Okay. So let's move forward. And now in this one, Greco is again white. And uh, black goes for b6 d4 bishop b7 yes nitul correct it is queen a4 bishop d3 and greco's opponents opponent plays f5 here which is a very interesting move but a losing move and now what would you play here yes white went for e into f5 bishop into g2 queen h5 check g6 f into g6 knight f6 and here white's idea a uh, black's idea was that white has to play only move g7 check g7 check knight into h5 okay chess space doesn't want me to do that so let's go for opening spoke and now it can't stop me so white goes for g7 check if white goes for g7 check knight h5 gh8 queen but here black would still be in the game after bishop into h1 but uh, greco saw, saw a move uh, different than his opponent and he played g into h7 check brilliant move and now knight h5 is forced and bishop g6 was made 
exactly Nitul, you are right. So this is how White won the game in seven moves. Okay. So we are seeing the brilliance of a player called G. Greco who lived 400 years ago and he had so many brilliant wins, short wins. You know, our main uh, interest here is short games. So let's move forward. And uh, now we have finished with Greco's games. There are many other Greco games, but I thought I have showed you enough of Greco games and uh, it will be nice if we go further. And now we see one game which is quoted in almost all the short games manuals. You know, this, this game was played between Richard Reti and just a moment, Savili Tartakovar. Richard Reti, as we all know, is a world famous grandmaster. And also Savili Tartakovar in 1910. This game belongs to 1910. And, and this is one of the most famous chess games, short chess games between two strong players. So let's see. So Reti played e4. Uh, nowadays, uh, when we talk about Reti, we, we know about an opening which is knight f3. Okay, it just doesn't want me to play. So, okay. Okay, well, we'll see this game first and then I'll come back. So, Reti played e4, c6, Karapan was played, d4, d5, and now white went knight c3. And this game was played 110 years ago. It was played in 1910 in Vienna. So, d into e4, knight into e4, knight f6. And by the way, this opening which is which has appeared on the board is extremely popular now. In Karakan, this knight f6 by black is played by many young top grandmasters. Uh, so, you know, uh, these guys in 1910 knew what will be popular in 2020, which is amazing. So, white played queen d3, which is not the best move. Uh, white should either play knight g3 or knight e2 f6. But after queen d3, black went for e5, which is a counter mistake. You know, black should just play knight into e4 here. But black when black played e5, and now white took d into e5, and Tartagore played queen a5 check, bishop d2, and queen into e5. So this was the initial idea of uh, Sevili Tartakovar, and uh, he thought that he is getting the e4 and the f6. So okay. So here he played queen e5 and Reti, Richard Reti played a brilliant move here, which is long castles. So now the question is, can black take on e4 is the question. Should black take knight e4 or queen e4? I think queen e4 is easy because rook e1 and the queen will go. But can black take knight e4? Can you think about this move? Is knight e4 a good move? Is it a good move? Yes, a very interesting question. In fact, in the game, black took knight into e4. Yes. And here, one of the most famous chess games continued. You can pause the video and think here, and I'll just show you the moves now. And here, white played queen d8 check. Brilliant move. King d8 is forced. And now, what will you play next? Yes, white played bishop g5, double check, rook d1 and bishop g5 both were giving check. So king c7 is forced. If king e8, then rook d8 would be mate. And after bishop d8, there was a mate. So this was the game, guys, played in Vienna in 1910. White mated black in 11 moves. And you can imagine here that both these players, Richard Reti and Sevili Tartakovar, are something like Magnus Carlsen and... Not Magnus Carlsen, but we can say that uh, who is the third? Uh, for example, MVL and Nakamura, something like that. So, you know, they were the top players of 1910. And in their game, this uh, these moves happened. So, this game became extremely popular and all the short moves 
short games, uh, databases, manuals, books, everywhere you will find this game. So this became one of the most famous games in the history of chess. Okay, so let us move forward. And now we'll see the next one. Okay. Just a moment. And here, okay. And uh, do you know, um, friends, that uh, which is the quickest loss of Vishwanath and Anand in his chess playing career? You know, Vishy Anand has uh, been five times world champion, and uh, you know everybody knows how what a genius he is. But you know, once he lost a game in six moves and that game is so extremely famous that it is there in all the short games book. So do you know that game? So if, if you're uh, liking, if you're watching this, uh, you can just uh, like the video and uh, I hope more people can enjoy this stream and learn from it that is my idea that is why i'm just coming on youtube you know in this lockdown time uh, it is important for uh, for people like me who know who have played chess for a long time to teach others so that's the whole idea so if you have any questions or anything you can just write in the comments also i'm seeing the comments uh, thank you nitul for watching and yes, I was talking about uh, Vishy Anand's uh, shortest game and everybody knows this. This was a game played in 1988. Uh, Anand was playing with black pieces and his opponent was Alonso Zapata, a Cuban grandmaster. And this was played in Biel in Switzerland in 1988. So no short games uh, lecture or class will be complete without showing you this game which was which created a sensation in the world at that time and even today when people see this they are uh, so this was a game played between this moment yes this was a game played between zapata and anand anand is black in this game so zapata played e4 anand played e5 knight f3 and anand played the petrov defense which is even today, the, one of the most uh, played openings, one of the main openings. And here, Zapata played knight e5, d6, knight f3, knight e4, knight c3 was played. And now knight into c3 is the most common move by black. Black should play knight into c3. But Anand made a huge blunder by playing bishop f5. This was a huge blunder. This move created a sensation in the chess world. And now white to play and win. What should white play here? Yes, not a very difficult move. So I will tell white played queen e2 and black resigned. Why did black resign? Because black had initially thought that he can simply play queen e7 here and he will be fine. But queen e7 is not possible here because of knight d5. And after knight d5, black queen has to go back to d8. And after d3, white wins the game. So this is how uh, Vishy Anand lost in six moves way back in 1988. Okay. So let's uh, see this uh, very quickly once more. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight e5, d6, knight f3, knight e4, knight c3. And Anand made a huge mistake by... And here nowadays uh, everybody knows that you have to take knight into c3, d c3, bishop e7, bishop f4. And uh, I mean Chinese players Yu Yang Yi and uh, others, they are the big exponents of this line. So this is very, very, very popular. But uh, in 1988, Anand was 
Yes, Anand played bishop f5 and after queen e2, he just resigned. Okay, so I hope you understood. And now we will go to the next one, which is. Okay, we will see a game which was played in 2018 between two Indian grandmasters. So white is the Deep Sen Gupta and black is Srinath Narayanan. And uh, both were quite high rated at that time. Uh, Deep Sen Gupta playing with white pieces was 2563 and uh, Narayanan uh, was 2525. So here, okay. I hope you can see the annotations. Let me just okay. And here, yes. So we will put black here. No, we should put black. Yes. So D played D four. Black played Knight F six, and Bishop G five was played. And this opening is known, uh, known as Trompovsky opening, which is a uh, favorite of many strong players here. Carlsen has played this and most of the top players have played this. And here black went d5, which is uh, very solid. e3, c6, all looks very natural here. Bishop d3, both sides are developing. Bishop g4, knight e2. Knight bd7, black bishop is out of the pawn chain, everything is fine. f3, bishop h5, castles, e6, bishop g6, c4, e6, everything is perfectly fine, normal. And suddenly white plays c into d5 here, which is a very normal move. And here, Yes, and here black can just play into d5 and everything will be fine. There will be a big long middle game after knight c3, bishop d6 and anybody can win. But something amazing happened here. After c into d5, black thought that he should take bishop into d3, which is also perfectly fine. Bishop into d3, black doesn't want... Uh, white to play after uh, ed5 something like bishop g6 and uh, after hg6 black will have double pawns so black said okay let me take bishop into d3 which is perfectly fine and now white should simply take queen d3 and after e ed5 the game will be equal but white played a move which was a huge blunder d into c6 white played d into c6 the idea being that after b into c6, queen into d3, and white is a pawn up here. So you can count the pawns. White has 7 pawns and black has only 6 pawns. So this was white's idea. But what did white miss here? Can you tell? What is the move that was missed by white here? After black's next move, white resigned. What did black play here? Yes, that is a question. Thank you, Nitul. Thank you so much for, for the comments. So after d into c6, what did black play after which white resigned? So as usual, you can pause the video and think in the meantime. Yes, Nithul, you are perfectly right. Bishop into e2. This very simple move was missed by white. Because white's idea was that after bishop e2, I will take c into d7. And now queen d7 looks forced. And after queen e2, white is better because... White is simply a pawn up. This was White's idea. But White missed the very brilliant move 
knight into d7 and now bishop d8 is forced and after bishop d1 rook d1 rook d8 if you count the pieces black has an extra bishop so deep sen gupta with a rating of 2567 missed a very simple move knight into d7 and after knight into d7 white had to resign immediately so white had to resign on 10th move in this game you know this game was played i think i was there in this tournament or not so sure it was played in kolkata open in 2018 and uh, again this game created a lot of sensation it came in all the major chess websites that a strong grandmaster lost in 10 moves with white pieces which normally doesn't happen at all so i hope you like this game it was a very interesting game and uh, yes moving forward i have a few more games yeah this one is a long stream so okay now here yes so when i was searching for games for this uh, this class i i found one game by tigran petrosian so just a moment yes so in this game tigran petrosian is white tigran petrosian the famous world champion from armenia and his opponent is the famous dutch grandmaster hans ri Yes, so this was played in Hugo Wills in 1971, this game, and this game I really like. It's a very short game. Uh, normally in Tigran Petrosh Petrosian's career, there were not many short games, but this one was there, and this is quite a famous game, so I'll show you this. So Petrosian played c4, the English opening, and Hans III played uh, e5. Hans is a very strong, was a very strong Dutch grandmaster. Knight c3, knight f6, and we have English four knights here g3 it is hard to imagine that in such an opening such a positional opening white can win in nine moves so bishop b4 knight d5 knight into d5 now this move is not so good knight into d5 they don't play this uh, much nowadays so black can go bishop c5 here or uh, even castle is fine but knight into d5 e into d5 and now black played e4. This was black's idea. But we will see that this is not a good move. Here at least knight e7 should be played by black. But after e4, white went dc6, ef3. And now after white's next move, black resigned. So can you tell white's next move here? Can you tell Tigran Petrosian's next move? What did Tigran Petrosian play? And black resigned after it. Yes, it's a very, very nice move. White played queen b3 here. And black resigned because black has nothing to do here. Because now... White is threatening to take queen b4 and if black goes bishop e7 I have simple c into b7 and uh, if you go a5 then I have simple a3 and white is winning a piece in all the variations. So black resigned here and Petrosian won in only 9 moves. Yes, it's a very very nice game. And I really liked it when I was uh, preparing material for today's class. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Okay. And remaining on the Petrosian games. This game was lost by Petrosian. Petrosian is playing with black pieces. And he was playing against... Alexander Koto. Alexander Koto, as we all know, has written the book Think Like a Grandmaster, which is an instant chess classic. And here we see a game by 
settings let's enable replay training so that you can see the player's name and this game was played in ussr championship final in 1949 guys so we are seeing such old classical games and here white started with d4 white is koto black is petrosian six knight c3 knight f6 cd5 this is exchange variation in queen's gambit declined bishop g5 bishop e7 e3 c6 queen c2 and knight e4 is a big mistake black should not play knight e4 here all of us know now that the castle is the correct move here black should just castle for example if i just tell you the variation here castles bishop d3 now white's idea is to take on f6 and then take bishop h7 so you have to play knight d7 here now white has knight e2 rook e8 castles knight f8 and uh, black white has many moves here white can play rook b1 or rook e1 and white will be fine but surprisingly this did not happen and after queen c2 black played knight e4 so after knight e4 white took bishop e7 queen e7 and now can you tell white's move here what did white play here so even the great petrosian you know blundered like this so white played knight into d5 the best move in this position winning a pawn e into c into d5 queen c8 check queen d8 is forced and now bishop b5 check knight c6 bishop into c6 b c6 queen into c6 and black resigned here so this was a game by Tigran Petrosian and he lost in 13 moves probably the quickest uh, defeat of uh, the career of uh, Tigran Petrosian I believe this one because it's hard to imagine that he would have lost another game in so less moves okay so let us continue further okay we saw this already okay okay let us see a game by alexander alekhain another short game alexander alekhain versus abraham kaufman in 1902 1919 Again, a very short game. So d4, d5, knight f3, c5, bishop f4, cd4. And now what is white's best move here? Just think about it. What should white play here? Queen d4 is bad because knight c6 will come. So, for example, you, you should not play queen d4 here, knight c6 will come and white will be losing a tempo. So, yes, so what should you play here? Yes, you should play bishop into b8, rook b8 and now queen d4. The advantage of this line is that knight c6 cannot come now. And the queen is attacking the f7 move pawn also. And there is no knight c6 to disturb white's queen. So remember a moves like bishop f4, uh, guys. Bishop f4 is a very nice move. Cd4 and now bishop b8 is a very nice move. Also, rook b8, queen into d4. b6 was played and now every move comes with a threat. e4. So up ye important cheez yaad rakhye that in chess, you have to give threats on every move, if possible. You know, when you develop with threats, that has a lot of effect. So here we will see that again, Alexander Alekhine is giving a th threat of e into d5. So white took, sorry, black took d4 and now queen into d8. Brilliant move. King d8, 
and white plays knight e5 and black has to resign here because knight f7 is also coming knight c6 is also coming and king e8 b and e r a you kick bishop b5 check a jayega to सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट मूव क्या थी इस पोजीशन में यहां पर आपको रुकना है थोड़ा सी डी फोर के बाद और ऑटोमेटिक मूव नहीं खेलनी है लाइक नाइट डी फोर इज ऑटोमेटिक यू हैव टू वेट हियर एंड प्ले बिशप इन टू बी एट रुक बी एट क्वीन डी फोर ओके फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रैटेजी एंड नाउ व्हाइट हैज गॉट द इनिशिएटिव सो यू प्ले डी फोर now black should play e6 but then also he'll be clearly minus but he took took d into e4 queen d8 king d8 knight e5 black resigns so it is so easy you know if you play correct chess you know chess with the with threats with good calculation it is very easy bishop b5 and it's lost okay so let us move further और अगला गेम अभी हम देखेंगे यस आई आई थिंक दिस इज अ लास्ट गेम आई वांट टू शो यू इन दिस सीरीज एंड या आफ्टर दिस आई कॉल इट अ डे सो दिस वाज प्लेड बिटवीन दिमिट्री एंड्रिया किन and sergey karyakin and this is also very famous game now oh, c4 was not played here i think just a moment Let me check okay okay it went with c4 yes okay so this was a game between uh, karyakin black and ryakin white Knight c3, knight c6, knight f3, g6 here. In the Petrosian game, knight f6 was played, and g6, d4, c d4, and white plays knight d5. You see, knight d5 is a very threatening move because यहाँ पे if you go knight d4, then white has uh, simply bishop, black has bishop g7, and I think uh, black has no problems whatsoever. बट यहां पे विद थ्रेट्स के साथ डेवलप करना इंपॉर्टेंट सो नाइट डी फाइव इज अ वेरी नाइस मूव नाइट डी फाइव ब्लैक प्लेट बिशप जी सेवन नॉर्मल मूव एंड व्हाइट अगेन डेवलप्ड विद अटैक बिशप जी फाइव सो यू आर सीइंग द डिफरेंस हर मूव के साथ आपको अटैक करना है स्पेशली अगर आपके पास व्हाइट पीसेज हैं तो ट्राई टू अटैक विद ईच एंड एवरी मूव ट्राई टू गिव ए थ्रेट डेवलप विद ए थ्रेट सो वेन यू डेवलप विद ए थ्रेट it is always very inconvenient inconvenient for your opponent so knight e7 now ab aap kya khelenge white se sabse natural move aati hai uh, mind mein knight f6 check but black simply goes king f8 okay this is a problem so for example knight f6 check denge black will go king f8 and now your pieces are you know not very coordinated because abhi h6 ka threat aa raha hai next bishop h4 pe g5 aayega and stuff like that so here white played knight into d4 brilliant move ab lag raha hai ki white ek piece sacrifice kar raha hai but actually aisa nahi hai so black took bishop into d4 so if black plays knight into d4 then simply you lose the queen with bishop e7 okay so bishop into d4 was played otherwise Black, I think f6 force था यहाँ पे but f6 नहीं खेला f6 was force. अभी bishop into d4 पे देखते हैं बहुत interesting game हुआ bishop into d4 and now what will you play? What should white play here? Yes, bishop into d4. White played the very brilliant move queen into d4. इसका आइडिया सिंपल है कि नाइट डी फोर पे नाइट एफ सिक्स चेक किंग एफ एट बिशप एच सिक्स मेट क्वीन सैक्रीफाइस तो ब्लैक ने कैसल किया 
अभी हाउ डू यू फिनिश द गेम वॉट इज द बेस्ट वे फॉर वाइट टू फिनिश द गेम कैन एनी बडी टेल वाइट टू प्ले एंड विन Yes, knight f6 check, king h8, and now the last move is very nice, very brilliant, and it finishes the game. What is the move? Knight g4 check and black results. Because f6 अगर खेलते हैं तो bishop f6 आएगा, king g8 पे knight h6 आ रहा है, और king g8 जाते हैं तो knight h6 आ रहा है. So in all the variation, it is finish. So white won the game in after ng4 black resigned so white won this game against a 2760 player in 10 moves what a brilliancy matlab agar aap 2760 player ko 10 moves mein hara sakte hain to fir aap kuch bhi kar sakte hain just so this was it guys i think uh, that's it for today i had a long stream almost more than 1 hour so i am very new to youtube but uh, i hope these uh, lessons will be useful for you and uh, if you come regularly to my channel and uh, listen to the lectures you will definitely learn a lot of uh, new things you know i will go a little more advanced in my future lectures this i started from the year 1600 the short games because it is easier to you know make you understand shorter games i will come to the longer games also but that will be in later part of uh, my classes so okay i hope you learnt a lot and uh, see you in my next video thank you thank you nitul for uh, being there and uh, you should uh, like and subscribe the channel it will help in make the channel grow you know tell more people about it so that you can uh, they can uh, benefit from it and uh, see you in my next video bye bye till then thank you so much bye